welcome. Hope you're all having a wonderful morning. Welcome to today's live stream. So this is a series where as I kind of get my work day started, I go live and just talk about painting, show you what I'm working on. And today I'm doing a 12 by 16 and this is oil on panel. I just streamed my color mixing with the channel members. So thank you all to the channel members. And I also share my reference photos to the channel memberships as well. So this is going to be just a nice morning sunrise in the mountains. This is a place that we skied to last week and just caught a beautiful early morning sunrise. And so right now I've just got some burnt sienna and I'm mixing it with the thinner, some paint thinner Gamsol and I'm just trying to sketch in my composition, get the whole idea of everything in place and then move on with color. Let's see. Hello, everybody in the comments. Hope you're all doing super well. It's a cold day here, snow in the area. It's a good day to sit inside the studio. Got some coffee. So I've got a number of photos from this particular area. And I'm trying to compose something that really resonates with me. And just this area just inspired me. The morning was so crisp and calm and quiet. And the birds are in the air chirping. I really want to do a larger painting. And so I, I hope this can kind of serve as a way for me to just understand what that might be and what I want to do. So we're going to see how far I can get uh, with, with this today. At least get it to a point where it's looking good before the live stream ends here. Hey everybody, hey Chris, hey Rob. Hey Sean, I hope you're all doing super well. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer. It's just a fun way for me to kind of include others in my studio and get to chat about just art in general. really helps me grow and learn like I always say with these live streams it's just it's what I'm doing normally and it's helpful to have some company so thank you all for joining I really appreciate that been working on a larger landscape and I love working on the big ones, but these are just so helpful for me, and I, I've really kind of taken to them the last couple weeks. I hope you all have enjoyed them as well. So I'm just looking for general composition. I'm not focused too much on shadows. I, I just want to get things to a point where, for me, I know where things are going to be and how they're going to be. Got some sagebrush down here in the foreground. I'd like to put some wildlife at some point. Maybe not during the, the live stream, but it's such an inspiring spot. We, the elk are really migrating back in, into this area. They really go spend a lot of time as they're going through this these 
this area in this particular valley as well. Got me thinking a lot about that. Yes, am I using burnt sienna? That Yep, this is just uh, burnt sienna. It does have some medium in it, so uh, just kind of go over the colors that I'm starting with here. The colors out of the tube are on the top, and it's titanium white, ultramarine blue. Uh, I'm sorry, titanium white, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, cad orange, and this is cad yellow deep, and then I also have thalo blue. And I've just mixed a variety of cool grays, some warm grays, uh, some brighter tones. I'd like to ha really amplify some of the light in the sky. It's just a good time right now to work out any of the kinks in terms of composition. I just I always like to do this now before I, I get started with any color, just so that I don't get ahead of myself. And just real quick here, I'm going to grab a, uh, a makeup sponge. It's just something I've been doing a lot lately just to, to work out my, my sketches and compositions. It just, it's a good way to make adjustments and kind of erase. I think I've got my mountains a little too high in the sky for what I'm wanting to capture. Just bring them down a little bit. Again, it, if it gets sloppy, that's fine with me. Just looking for those edges so that I know where things are going to exist. Some nice glowing clouds right through here. doesn't necessarily even have to make sense. I've got trees up here, but I'm looking to separate and segment, th segment things into to chunks. Another tree right here. Have I ever sketched out a painting like this and then intentionally called it finished before getting into to other things? I, I have. Uh, I just don't think that's where my heart is. I don't necessarily think that uh, I'm as good at, at capturing things in that way. What I love so much about just painting landscapes is just connecting with them personally. And so many times I just have a, a story to tell, an idea in mind, and it's just part of the fun for me is just trying to capture that and, and connect with people who kind of feel the same way and have similar stories that they can be reminded of. It'd be cool to put maybe like a, a crick through here. Just kind of flowing like this, a couple oxbows. And down through here and then So now's the time to make just major composition changes to it. Really get 
some of the, the bigger areas established so you know where they are. And I want my foreground to come down through here. I think it looks good so far. Again, got some sagebrush in the foreground. And if I missed a question, I apologize about that. I'll try to get to as many as I can as I as I work through this. Sometimes you just gotta get caught up in the process. So we've got layers of trees back here, and I want to know where they're gonna be before I get too far into this. So I'm just just want to know where they are, and you can kind of just manipulate what you already have when you're sketching things out in this way and thinning down some burnt sand to create a wash. It's just... You can almost just not even have to add anything else and just the... as you push things across and make different marks, it just sort of changes things. You can start to see some of those lines and as long as I can see them I know that I'm confident where I'm going to go with everything. So this line right here, is below that, it's going to be shaded. And then above that, I'm going to have the light kind of coming across the mountainside right here. I think that's just about everything I need. So let's get into some color. Just wash my brush real quick. So again, just to, to go over my tools and, and supplies here, I'm using Gamblin Artist Oils. Uh, my brush is here, just a half inch angled flat brush. Uh, this is a pretty old one starting to fray a little bit but it works and that's kind of all I need. I've pre-mixed all of my colors so I've got titanium white, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, cad orange, and then cad yellow deep and thalo blue and I've pre-mixed my colors uh, before this live stream. I pre-mix all of my colors with the, the channel members and I also share all of my reference photos which I take myself to the channel members as well. So if you're interested in that, it's a great way to support the channel, what I'm doing, and okay, let's just get into it. So when I say show the light, I'm I want to capture a story, and I'm wanting the light to help tell that. And so I want to think about the light source before I think about too much in terms of the, the composition and the shadows. And that's going to help me, I think, further in the process. Just by getting the ideas of where the light's going to be. Because once I add darker colors, it starts to, to make things more difficult. So I start very thin. And I'm just thinking about those lighter tones and uh, the warmth in those tones. So I'm grabbing... This is just like yellow and white, and I'm trying to think about where those brighter areas are going to be, and I want to just get that marked. And I'm going to take some pure white. And so in my colors themselves, I've got about 15, 20% medium, and then I've added paint thinner gamsol into those and if I need them to be more thin I would rather add more thinner than medium I try to stay away from adding too much medium um, the medium I'm using is liquid impasto I just like it because it has more volume than liquid original I like the the texture of it uh, it's just personal preference A 
up some orange. So right here, the sun is going to be just peering over the horizon. So I'm going to get these brightest colors established first. And in the foreground, like I said, I'm going to have some sagebrush through here. So I want the sagebrush to really glow and that's going to kind of connect the light from up here down to here. So to help show the light, it's it's more than just the light source itself. It's what's reflecting the light, what is capturing that light. And I'm going to use the foreground to kind of create a, a second focal point right here with some of the brighter highlights and really make it appear like the sun is just beaming off this hillside. So just getting some of these colors. Just so I know. Okay, I'm going to wash the brush now. I sure wish I could lay out 20 colors like that with acrylics. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. It's hard to do that you know, because they dry. And that's just one of the disadvantages. There's many advantages, I think, to acrylics. But one of the disadvantages, again, why I, I, I do like using oils is I can lay out these colors. And then um, in the, the last live stream, so this is, uh, this is what, number five? Uh, in the last one that I did, so I'm just adding some of the, the shadows now. So I've got some pine trees over here. And now, once I get the light shown, you can't have light without the shadows. And the shadows help show that light. So now I'm going to start getting into some of the shadows before I start going anywhere else. Um, but in the last one I did, uh, I was able to continue working that painting throughout the rest of that day. And then I woke up the next morning and I was thinking maybe I would have to layer and just kind of let it dry and just uh, work at it at a different time once that first layer of paint dries because there is a point where it, once it starts to, to tense up and the paint starts to get partially dried, um, it's, it can be easily overworked. But to my surprise, I woke up the next morning because I didn't add too much medium into the paint and I use more thinner if I wanted to thin it down I was able to to just get right into the painting the next day and the paint actually stayed wet that entire next day uh, so I actually worked that painting uh, about two full days without the paint actually drying and I was able to just work right into the paint that I had the previous day uh, the paint that I had laid down and so that's just one of the advantages I like of, of oils. It allows me to, to work through my colors and pre-mix them. And by pre-mixing them, that just also helps me build that relationship I have with the colors I use. And I, I just think that's so much of it when it comes to color theory. You know, a lot of times people talk about color theory. I, I just think that um, that's just, just a fancy word for, or fancy phrase for uh, the, you know, the relationship you have with your colors and it helps me develop that by by mixing these just standalone and pre-mixing them and it just helps me work on building that that understanding of of how my colors interact with each other and that's just such a huge part of it for me anyways so this has got some phthalo blue so i want these these mountains to be just really feel like there's the atmosphere and the depth and these dark blue colors adding just more bluish tones as we get back into here is going to help with that but I'm still just going to focus on adding some shadows here just looking for the darkest areas in each given part of the painting And good morning. Welcome everybody. If you're just joining, thanks for joining. Hope you're doing super well. 
Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Just getting started with my day. I uh, just love working on these smaller sizes and I love including everybody into the my studio here. It's just it's helpful to chat about things and share knowledge. I'm just a big proponent of that. So thank you all for joining. Just some of the shadowing down here. So again, all I'm looking for at this point is just some of the darker shadows. So I've got some of the lighter areas and some of the warmth. And I'm going to establish some of these shadows so I know where they're at. And I also want them, I think uh, the last, and I'm always, this is just a, I think we'll just end up being a, a good documentation of how I progress through my work. And I hope to do many of them and I hope to keep these going. I, th I think this will just really help show how I work through and, and over time, how I progress my work. And so I'm always thinking about what I'm taking away from each painting. And I think that's why it's, so, it's, it's, it's becoming more important for me to work on these smaller color studies, to work on my color mixing, and to just complete something. These larger paintings that I do can just take weeks to finish. And uh, that's great, and I love them. That's really my true passion is in telling those stories. I have so much that I want to continue with and continue to tell with those those large pieces that I do, but uh, there's just something about completing a painting and these smaller paintings help me do so more often and that just helps me take away and, and build that toolbox I have. And that's just really how we progress in our art is just building that, that, uh, that toolbox and tool belt of all these techniques and, and methods and tricks that we have that we've learned from past paintings and, you know, apply them to future paintings and in the last one I, I think as I start to work through some of these what the mistake I think I, I keep running into is I don't establish my I, I really like establishing the lighter areas the, the brighter colors first but then I think I kind of get into those too quickly and I end up putting some of the darker areas on the back burner and uh, kind of comes back to bite me further in the painting so I'm focusing on the establishing the darker areas sooner and that's just one thing that I've started to take away from my process is, is establish the lights but then make sure you know how dark the darks are, are going to be and, and where they're going to be uh, just kind of before continuing on it doesn't have to be detailed it doesn't have to be much it just it just needs to have those darks on there and present and that just kind of helps i think the mind piece together what's in between and and to get through the rest of it That's looking good. So I, I like all this. I kind of feel like I have a good idea. Of how things are going to be. So I'm going to just dab off my brush. Don't need to wash it. And pick up this blue color here. I'm going to add some phthalo blue to that. Another question, Jason, how, how long does it take for oils to dry? It can take several days to be dry to the touch. And I think uh, it can be several weeks to be ready for uh, like a removable varnish like Gamvar. And then, you know, the, the real curing process and being fully dry ready for a permanent varnish can take you know months and that just depends how thick the paint is but it also just depends how much medium you add to it but 
I think that that was a big block for me when I was beginning with with oils was I, I never really wanted to get it I always wanted to get into oils but uh, I didn't really care to because I I thought that the dry time would actually slow me down but I think what the the extended working time actually did for me was uh, break that system of feeling like I have to layer my way to the finish and and it started pushing me towards a a direction of getting the painting done while it was, the paint was still wet and then once I begin to understand how to do that more I just became actually more efficient for me so it actually seems like it would take longer but I think that's because as a, an acrylic painter that's just uh, something you're, you that's always on your mind and how you think about things you think about painting in layers and waiting for a layer to dry and then working on top of that because that's you know kind of the only way that you can do so and so when you're thinking about oils you think of how long you'd have to be waiting for those layers to dry but I think if you're going to get into oils you have to change that mindset and start thinking about how you can finish before that layer dries and then what that does in turn is actually speed up the process and it actually makes things go quicker because you get them done faster and the, the workable time starts to become something you really love. Um, and that's, at least that was the experience kind of for me. So I always just take it nice and slow. Just want to know with confidence everything I'm doing. I'll take some of that upper sky color, I'm gonna add some orange to it. Maybe even some yellow. So it's more gray, it's got some warmth, and then some of that blue just brings it down a notch. So as we get close to the sun, I want those blues to disappear. And it'll appear more blue, I think, once you get the rest of the painting in. Sometimes you don't even need to, to have your color be blue for you to think that it is when it's done, just, just because of the way it, it sits in relation to other colors. And, Sometimes for something to, to to appear cool, it just needs to be just that cooler than the next color beside it. It doesn't need to actually be in the, the blue spectrum of color. It just needs to be cooler than the other colors. So pretty thin how I'm applying this and I saw a question earlier do I always use the burnt sienna I do now uh, and it, it was something I always pushed against because just I feel like I'm always running experience ex experiments in my head and but as I got into using the burnt sienna more I think it's hard to describe maybe what are the benefits of using a, a, a toned panel with burnt sienna. So to tone this panel, I just add burnt sienna and paint thinner. And then I just scrub it on with a, like a paper towel or a shop rag or something. And just to give it this nice uh, burnt sienna tone. And it, if anything, I'm not sure what it actually, the benefit it actually serves. But what I noticed was I, I feel like I started judging my own colors slightly better. And I've tried using, you know, like a gray to start. But the warmth of it, I feel like, puts my perspective in a certain way to where I just seem to be mixing my colors more appropriately. Um, and why that is, I, 
I'm not sure, but I, I do tend to think that I can see colors more in a way that I was hoping I, I would, rather than starting with uh, something with a, a different color. I've used a lot of different colors to begin paintings, and this this nice, warm, burnt sienna tone is just its really helping me see my blues and some of the grays, how, how they should be, how I want them to be anyways. Something I've just noticed, and why that is, that's always hard for me to answer, but I, it's why I'm sticking with it anyways. We got some nice glow coming in from the sun uh, and then the same way so as I get mix into some of these blues I want to be careful not adding too much of a yellow tint or even an orange because it's going to start to look uh, muddy and green and so to help combat that just adding some magenta can kind of just neutralize that that uh, that effect so if you want something to turn out nice and warm, sometimes having more of a pinkish color will actually make it appear more golden or yellow when it starts to blend into a little bit of the, the blue. And really just because magenta is just kind of the opposite of blues and it just kind of neutralizes that. So I'm not going to get into the, the actual trees quite yet. I'm going to just sort of paint over some of those areas where I'm going to have trees coming up into the sky. And then I will get into that and worry about that once I finish the sky. The clouds on top, just kind of pulling my brush up into them. white just to keep things from darkening too much okay just dry off my brush real quick and pick up more of this bright blue so it's just got some phthalo blue into it. A little bit brighter. I'm going to use it on this side and I think we need to darken it. Okay, just a little blue through here, and that'll just mix in with some of the warmer colors I add over the top. bright pink and I'm gonna add a little more of this blue touch of yellow Again, I, I'm going to lose my trees a bit through this area, but 
Not worried about that right now. I can fix that later. Just a brighter, warm color. It's kind of mixing in some of that gray, some of that blue, making it gray. So the transition colors between the blues and the warm colors, warm, bright colors, highlights are the more gray you can get it, the better. And then you can kind of pull that back in one direction, whichever which way you want. A little bit of yellow in this. Do I prefer the Gamsol over Liquin? Uh, I use both in combination. I, use, I always use a little medium like Liquin but then I add, I never really go more than about 15% or so, and then I add Gamsol into that if I want it to be more thin and more workable. So this is just a brighter color and I just want that along the horizon. Just pull that up into the kind of what I've already got in the sky. And just lightly, when I when I blend it out, I'm just really releasing the pressure on the brush to just lightly blend them together. And none of that has to be a perfect blend. Sometimes it could just appear to be maybe some clouds or just something in the atmosphere. Pretty good. I'm gonna grab some of this white. It's got just some warmth in it and continue working some of these clouds through here. What's your opinion about soft body versus open acrylics? I have issues with drying time. I really like the soft body. Uh, the the open acrylics, I think the... What is the brand? Golden? Golden open acrylics. I never really liked those because to me they were too transparent. And I don't know if it's because the medium or whatever they added to it just made it more transparent. I didn't really like those. Uh, you, you might want to try something like the Atelier Interactive 
open acrylics or interactive artist paints uh, they're they're meant to be at least something to look into they're meant to stay open longer um, I mean if you're looking for something different that might be a good way to go I have used some of them I do I did think that they were good I really liked the feel of them but it was kind of the, also the time when I was just starting to transition into oils and so I didn't get too much into those but it might be something to think about Looks a bit like Yellowstone. Yeah, we're pretty close here. It's not in the park. I'll leave it at that. But you're right, very close. Just a beautiful spot. So some of these areas up here, as they kind of blend into some of the, the blues, they do get a little dark. And so just to combat that again, I just kind of add a lighter warm color to, the, to that and just try to lift it up. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush. I've been watching you for five years and always wanted live paintings like this. I'm glad, I'm glad to, to hear that. And that's, uh, you know, my goal is, when I started the, the YouTube channel, I think uh, it was right around the time when I was making the, the big move to take my art full time and you know, I was just looking for ways to help and get the word out there and to help other artists and just start a community of you know people talking about painting and sharing ideas and really didn't know where or how I you know what direction I wanted to go with it but just through time the most important thing for me is uh is obviously my artwork itself and the more that that I can paint and the more that I can create the art that I want to the happier I am and these live streams have really helped me just do just that and focus on my art and focus less on making videos and um, at the same time it's just it's so great to to see so many of you in here and uh, be able to chat with you and you know answer questions and so it really just I, it's great to hear that that there's people really connecting with these and enjoying these and um it just it's also it's just really helpful for me to keep me painting and so thank you and thank you all for supporting over the years and bearing with me as i i figure out my own process and that's just the thing i think it's if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, um, I would take your time with it and not jump into one thing or another just because, you know, you think you need to or, but it can really uh, take you in a direction and, you know, maybe that you weren't anticipating. And for me, it was all about the art and it's always been about the art and I've wanted it to be that way anyways. And I think YouTube can take you in a direction that, that it takes you further away from your art if you're not careful. And if that's not what you're looking for, that's where I think it, it can kind of be a trap if you're a real creative person. I'm, I'm such an introvert myself, and I just want to paint. Um, so this is really just it's helping me find a system that allows me to just focus on the things that are important for me and... 
yeah, again, just thank you guys so much for all the love and support over the years. Okay, so I'm getting some of these warm colors around the sun. So some of that burnt sienna is just kind of mixing in and that's that's okay that's good i like the warmth and that's just a i think a, a good reason why burnt sienna again is a popular choice and a good choice is because it is just kind of a neutralizer it just with the blues it just sort of neutralizes the blues with your warm tones it it kind of just adds the warmth to those those warm tones and so it just it's kind of just a, a positive impact to colors overall just as a whole Kind of no matter what direction you're going for, it's just a good color. Yeah, hello everybody. If you're just joining, thank you. Hope you're all doing super well wherever you're at. It's a 12 by 16 on panel. I'm using Gamblin Artist Oils. And this is from uh, some reference I took. We skied to this this spot. I posted my Instagram and Facebook stories as we skied out here. Uh, it's just a beautiful morning and just really captured things in a way that inspired me. And I'm just trying to come up with a maybe an idea or further my inspiration for something I'd like to, to do in, on a larger scale. And I've established some of the, the warm, bright areas, and that's going to help kind of show that light. And now I'm just working on you know, the last few areas of the sky, I just kind of blend it out before I get any further. I'm keeping the paint fairly thin at the moment. All right, I'm gonna wash the brush again. Good morning from the Black Hills. Do I use only short handle brushes? Uh, it's a good question. I, I actually, I just use what I what I like and so many times I can't find the brushes I like with longer handles. I, I should probably just start extending them myself with, with something, but I would probably prefer longer handles, but I just, I never find the brushes that I really like in the long handles. Uh, so no, that's not anything in particular that I I do on purpose. It's just a lot of times I can't find the, the brushes in those long handles.
Just giving everything a nice fluff. Okay, getting closer. Add some of this brighter color to here. This is kind of where I want a nice bright glow in the, the sky, just right in this area. So just working on getting myself there. pick up some white. I've got some white on the side over here. And I'm gonna just add some of the cad yellow deep to this. A little more. Does Liquitex heavy body or soft body make a difference while painting those smooth skies foliage or would you recommend shifting to oils I think the soft body for me was easier um, but it, it it's always difficult because it does dry so fast um, there's uh, like I just mentioned the the atelier interactive acrylics that can kind of help with some of the blending I, heard really good things about about that I've used it I like the paint um, that really has some good blending time and they really advertise their their mediums as being able to blend more like oils uh, but oils are, are really gonna be probably most ideal and I know a lot of people do like the water mixable oils. I haven't personally tried them. Okay, so this is a little bit thicker and you can see as I add that thicker paint how much that's just going to stand out. orange I feel like I'm just taking my time a little more that, than uh, some of the previous lives. Just, again, continuing to work on my process and my technique. I think my ultimate goal is to be able to complete my paintings with just, you know, one layer. That's kind of always my goal is it just what's interesting for me. It's not necessarily what's right. But I find that if I just kind of slow down on some of these areas and sometimes I get a little too ahead of myself and how fast I want things to come together, it's when I don't feel like I do as good of work. So I'm just trying to take my time here as I build up some of these bright areas. light pressure and because I went thin with the paint to begin with it just allows me just to kind of paint right over the top without really having much blend into what's already on there and as I add more paint with each application it just starts to layer on top and that because I'm using more paint that just kind of overpowers whatever's there
I'm new here, what's what? So I'm just using a, a gessoed panel. It's a 12 by 16. I'm using Gamblin Artist Oils. Uh, it's just a great way for me if you're just joining me for the first time. It's just a, a series I'm doing. I think we're on the fifth one. I'm just getting my workday started and just stream live as I get to work on these uh, 12 by 16 more so color studies and um, but then they kind of turn into more detailed landscapes as I work through th through them uh, the rest of the day after the live and sometimes even into the following day it's just a great way for me to to work on my abilities and my techniques and to criticize my techniques and I just I love sharing ideas and I'm happy to have everyone join And uh, I share the, do the color mixing. I stream that to the channel memberships before every live on the channel here. And then I also, I take all my own reference photos and I share all those reference photos with the, the channel members as well. I think we have, uh, we're moving closer to, to 900 reference photos and these are, you know, high resolution, high quality photos. A lot of places around Yellowstone, Montana, and just everywhere I travel to. Um, I just hope that it becomes just a really nice resource of, it helps me build them, you know, the same photos, they're really the same library of photos that I use in my own work, and um, just building that library is, is what I'm always focused on, and I'm happy to share, and, and it's fun to see so many people just using those as inspiration in their own work and so yeah if you have any questions anybody at all just let me know i'm always trying to answer as many questions as i can in the live here as, as well as after So I'm going to add some white, a little bit of yellow to that. And it'll start to brighten up that spot in the sky. Some more white. I've actually got some more of the same color over here. Just brighten that even more. Yeah, I'm not going to get too detailed into this. I'll eventually come back to it, but just get it mostly there. I appreciate that. I'm just reading through some of the comments. Thank you all so much. How do I decide on subjects with my reference photos uh, or subjects that will go well with the backgrounds? I think it all has to do with, for me, it's my personal experience. Uh, so many of the things I choose to paint, just when I'm out in these places, ideas are, I mean, I've just, I've always got these ideas going through my head and um, I'm a real daydreamer type of personality and I think that's wh why I choose certain things I choose I've always got an idea in mind and I, I try to run through that idea and see if it's going to work for me um, yeah I think as far as what what I paint or why I, I think it's just that so much of it is just it's just an idea that I have ba you know based off of when I was there visiting or something something like that, so to speak. Okay. 
So overall, I'm not, I don't want to touch the sky too much more before I get into some of the foreground. So let's start to get into some of the foreground and just kind of see how that goes and then we'll take it from there. Chuck, you have the darkest colors applied. Are you moving forward with the, the warmer colors? Will you stay with the warmer colors? Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to warm up a lot, and I kind of see as I go here. But, uh, yeah, I want to have a lot of warmth in this painting. So I'm grabbing Burnt Sienna and Magenta. What's your opinion about Liquitex retarders and other mediums for acrylics? Uh, I haven't used, so what I'll say about acrylic mediums is uh, I started moving away from using a lot of medium in the acrylics because it would make it so transparent on me. Um, and right about the time when I was switching to oils, I I was looking into, you know, how to extend the, the dry time for acrylics, and I would probably go with, again, I've mentioned this a couple times in this stream so far, I would probably go, if I'm looking at that, I would go with a, a paint that's more designed to be a slower drying time, like the the Atelier Interactive Paints. Um, I haven't, I, I always used a couple of those mediums that you speak of, uh, and I never really found one that I really liked. So, yeah, I just don't have much of a recommendation for that. So I'm in this nice pink color. And I'm changing the direction of my brush to kind of just up and down. Um, just because there's going to be pine trees through here. And it's kind of just that pattern uh, starts to just make sense a little bit with in terms of the, the trees. So we're just kind of going up and down through here and getting that nice gradient from orange to kind of the, just a muted pink, muted magenta. And so that's really, you know, showing the light is, is all about, I think, getting that light established before you add the details. So with the mountains themselves, I'm gonna grab this color here. It's just a, it's like a warm gray. It's got just more burnt sienna, a little bit of orange, and it's just a nice warm gray. And I'm going to start with that for the mountainside. And I've got snow in the mountains, and I'll kind of reveal those later. Uh, do I use a mall stick? Uh, is that what they're called? Yeah, I think that's probably what they're called. I have in the past. I, I made one myself. Um, I actually don't really use that anymore. Sometimes if I'm working on something like some small detail in a larger painting, I, I will use something to stabilize my hand. Maybe if I'm working on you know an animal or something like that. A lot of times... Um, a lot of times I'll just use my hand and just double up my hand like this and that just helps me stabilize uh, I think I think they're helpful it's just not something I ever really got into and I, I think it helped me trained to you know using an aid like that over time I think it's, it's good if it works for you um, I think it helps me develop my motor skills by not using it. And I think I've seen some benefits of that over time, just feeling like my hand becomes more stable as I continue to paint. Um, that's something that I've really noticed is just I never used to be very stable with holding my brush and adding details. And uh, something I've noticed lately is I don't catch myself feeling like I need to stabilize my hand as time moves on and you know even though I'm not very good at holding things still sometimes I um, maybe just the 
timing it right or uh, being patient even though maybe I'm jerking a little bit with my hand just being patient and then getting some of it on there at the right time um, all of it regardless just comes with time and whether that's using it something to, to help you stabilize or not it, it all gets better with time I guess is is what I would say but no I haven't I just haven't used those much in my work Yeah, so for uh, what colors do I use to get the muted, distant look? Uh, all I do is just use um, and I just keep it more on the, the gray scale. And then just add more of those colors as I get closer to the foreground. All right. So I'm going to grab some phthalo blue. And that's a little too much. I'm going to add some magenta to that to just tame it down. So this blue underneath is going to be kind of just right beneath a ray of light coming over the top. And that color up above is really just the, the light sort of just warming up the air. And then to kind of bridge the gap between the two I'll just start to get into some of the, the gray tones. to be brighter as I get closer to the sun here. So I'm just kind of rolling this color up into here. Really just want the, the overall tone and the color to be right. The value before I get into details. And, I can, and so I keep it fairly thin and then I'll stack thicker paint once I get further in the process. Uh, yes, all the colors are mixed uh, with a base of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and titanium white. Then I also have magenta, orange, yellow, and then I have phthalo blue to get some of these bright sky colors. So, again, this is part of me taking it slow. I just continue to be a little undecided with the color I added to the mountain. So 
I'll just start to darken it down as I move through it again. And just basically taking some of that same blue down below mixed with some of the gray and it just slowly darkens. And it doesn't have to be a night, everything does not have to be nice and smooth. Because when I add some of the details over the top, that'll just kind of make all the imperfections disappear. So there's snow on the mountain and I'm going to be adding that and I always leave the snow for last because once I add anything that's closer to white that's when it hard, it's hard to go back the other way because then that'll start to mix in. that blue and kind of just mix right along the edge there to try and just blend these two colors together it's a hard blend again the warm and cool colors they don't like each other tend to look muddy when you start blending them together and so it's a delicate process and you try to just get something in between and then try to fluff them together a little bit and then slowly Whenever I mix a black and burnt sienna to get a darker brown, I get a, like a dark sap green. What to mix for a darker burnt umber look? I just like ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and then I keep it uh, heavy on the burnt sienna side. And if I need to make it more brownish, uh, you just add something more red to it, like magenta, something like that. Um, but really, that's kind of all I do, essentially. And just finding that right com or right mixture between the the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue that's kind of the trick um, and then phthalo blue can also produce a, an interesting result similar to that as well i'm kind of messing up the top of the mountain here but just getting started with that can always be changed add some magenta to this blue Trains coming through. This is not the br best brush to be doing this either. It starts to get kind of difficult. It's a large brush for this. Pick up 
some magenta and orange. I'm going to kind of get away from that spot now. A little bit of gray. get warmer now as we get into this area. All right. So I'm gonna pick up this blue color, a couple of these darker blues. Uh, I do sell these paintings, so the, the paintings from the live stream, I have been working on them in the background, uh, just adding some more details and things like that, and uh, I will be, I do sell all my, my work through my website. Um, my original paintings, they get uh, dropped through a timed drop system, just to keep things fair, it's just how I've started to, to release them. So I released my original paintings through my website. All that info uh, is, can be found either on my website or the email newsletter is a good way to keep up with that. I do not know any good books about color mixing. That's a good question. Um, if anybody else has any recommendation, but I uh, personally, I do not know of any good books. I, it's not something I've looked into. Uh, what do you think is one of the best place for a beginner artist to sell their paintings and any ideas of uh, of doing nuts in the future I, I don't know the, I'm not sure what you mean by the, the last part um, yeah sell, selling paintings for beginners I, I think personally that the the best way, 2022 is uh, the internet um, and I actually think it's harder to sell work in physical locations because you can't be there and a lot of times if you display art in a coffee shop or um, in a gallery or anywhere like that I actually think this day and age it's becoming harder to get those to sell because for people viewing your work at that location, uh, they really have no context of who you are and what you stand for and what it is you do on a large scale. Um, and the lack of context, I think, is what makes paintings difficult to sell. So when it comes to selling work, I would say for anybody who's just starting out, um, is focus on, you know, that. that's why I think so many people will say, that uh, it's, you know, the story is what sells the work. And really that's because that, that gives the viewer context of who you are as an artist and what it is you are doing. And um, art does not sell itself. At least it's very difficult because, uh, uh, peop you know, any anybody can hang a nice painting on the wall. But if you don't know where it came from or who's behind it and... Uh, information about that person that's that's where uh it, it just isn't as appealing you, and in order for artwork to connect with somebody who might buy it um you really have to give them that context so if you do hang something in like a store or a coffee shop or um i would definitely try to get whoever has that store to let them have you put uh, a card with uh, information about that painting what inspired it why you painted it all those things that's that's what sells a painting because at the end of the day a, 
a painting is an investment and I think you need to put your eyes yourself in the eyes of an investor and that's not just necessarily about money they're investing in um, in in an idea they're investing in what they want to exhibit to the world whether it's in their living room in their home or their business or you know they're investing in uh, how it makes them feel uh, there in one way or another it's a form of investment whether it's an emotional investment or financial but regardless I think when people buy artwork they're investing in something and and that there's a wide range of of what that investment could be so to sell work as a beginner um, I think the internet is the best access to get to to reach people um, and then it provides the easiest way to give give viewers context of what it is you do and why um, and then that helps them um, you know make that emotional investment or uh, you know for for them or for somebody else and so if I if I had any advice that's that would be um, and that's that's why it is helpful to be there in person and it's why so many galleries like to have shows where they invite the artists and they feature certain artists because without the artist being there it's hard to provide context and I think that's why so many galleries fail as well because you get people coming through the door and viewing the art um, and they really don't know anything about who painted all the work and it can be as beautiful as it can be but uh, without context it's it's hard for that person to to understand why they want it so I hope that helps anybody out there just thinking about you know how to get started selling your artwork and and that's why it's just so important to be yourself and to just put the word out there of why it is you do what you do Any recommendations for brushes and painting boards, supplies, things? Yeah, so um, I have a big list on my website where I have all the things that I use. I don't necessarily think that's the best, but it's uh, it's what I'm comfortable with. I and mean, I try to add those below the videos as well. So this is kind of just a nice, cool color gray. And I'm just going to add this throughout kind of the floor of the valley here. Darken down some of it. So at this point, now that I feel like I've got some things established, I just want to fill the rest of this now. And once I fill it, then I feel like I'll have a good idea of what I need to do with everything and start adding the details. So this is really just like a block in. Um, and then I'll just work right into it, wet on wet. Where am I from? I'm from the, the upper Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Lived a long time in North Dakota. And uh, I live in Montana now.
So generally this is a, a, about the appropriate color, but it might not be exact, but it's a good color to start with. So it's just helps me, this is sort of an easier part of the painting. Uh, it just helps me get close uh, and then it's going to be a nice complementary color that can just kind of mix into some of the details as I add them. Please don't spam. Don't worry, I'm on it. They're gone. So again, just taking my time through here. This has got some more blue to it. So uh, one of the things near the back side of this valley is uh, I want the colors to be more blue and that's going to make it feel more distant. Add that atmosphere uh, as well as, you know, right along the trees. It's got some shadows and things like that. And so that extra little bit of blue is going to kind of make those trees, those tree lines come alive. down into this color. Please keep doing the lives and yeah I'm definitely gonna continue with the lives it again it just it's really helpful for me to work through this and uh, I really enjoy having you all join me and uh, make keeps things interesting and uh, it's not so lonely getting started and just so happy that so many enjoy it as well and, and thank you all for being here Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can kind of see that little bit of blue starts to work out well against the tree line there. All right. So I've got some of this brown, and now we're just mixing colors together. I've got some black over here. Yeah, add some orange to that, warm it up. Again, we just want coverage at this point. I think 
And so as I add this darker color, what I'm noticing is uh, those mountains back there over here, I wanted them to be uh, maybe more blue than that. So I'm going to try just getting a little bit of color on the brush and just mixing it right into what's already on there. Just adding that nice atmospheric feel. Yeah, I like that. It's a nice change. Okay. Got more black. I'm just going to bring this over here, get it on there. Let me just pick up some orange, mix it in. Okay, I'm going to grab more orange, mix it in, and some magenta to that, a little bit of gray, just lighten it up. So we've got a hillside over here, and I want to feel like the light is just touching it. some back here as well. That's too bright though. So I'm just adding blue. So it's too bright, too warm, but as I add blue to it, it starts to just sink it in back there. And then it'll start to blend in with what I have already on the canvas and that just starts to match up just right. Okay. So, moving on to, uh, well, not we're not quite ready to move on to the foreground. I'm going to get some more of the snow color and just kind of cover up. I want some snow down here. So again, all of this is uh, its on the thinner side, because as I start to add detail over the top, I don't want those, it makes it easier to start adding details and things on top uh, when the paint isn't too thick to start. So kind of start thin and then just work my way into it. Good. And I'm going to start picking up kind of a 
brown color, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, but then I use more burnt sienna just to keep it brown. Yeah, how did I enjoy the skiing adventures the other day? It was awesome. Like I said, we skied to this place. It was just outstanding morning. If you follow my Instagram story, uh, you got to kind of see us get out there. But yeah, it's just overall, it's just always great. Now the mountains are getting dumped on right now, so... Uh, winter is definitely here to stay a little bit longer, especially uh, up high. So plenty more opportunities for uh, winter adventures and probably couldn't even get into where we were now with the new snow that's falling right now. I think I saw a person I know over in Red Lodge, uh, they're over two feet and still falling. And they're just right in the middle of it right now. Almost got it covered. I've never used the the liquid white. How's that? What uh, Bob Ross made popular? That I uh, I actually don't know what that is. Um, no, so I have I have not. You can see where it would help to have something on the canvas to help you blend. Um, it's probably similar to like a zinc white, which is transparent. Um, but I really like to stick with uh, more opaque colors and I like to use thicker paint as I build it up. Um, but I can see where it'd be helpful to have something down that just helped the colors really flow into it. Okay, so we're thinking about the sagebrush through here. So just little patterns. I start to blend some of these. Uh, I added these warm highlights earlier on and now I'm just kind of starting to use the brush randomly just to kind of start to blend some of those together start to create some of those patterns So if I was working with acrylics, this is really what I would try to do is just get 
all of this blocked in like so and then I'd probably let it dry and then start going in and adding the details and so I think kind of the only difference with oils is you can just start right away um, and not say you can't start right now with acrylics and just keep getting into it um, but it definitely takes a more of a layering approach a lot of this is probably dry if you're if you're using acrylics Get some of those darks uh, really in there. And just about there. Okay. All right, I'm going to wash the brush. And I'm going to, I think. I'm going to try to switch brushes right now, and I'm going to go with uh, the Dagger, Dagger Striper brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just start with uh, probably just what's back here in the mountains. So I want the color of the snow. So I'm going to go ahead and just re-up my white and just blend that white right into this lighter blue color. And that's probably fairly similar. I'm gonna add just a little phthalo blue to that. Okay. Test it out. Maybe I'll just shift over and add some of this darker color to that. Liquid white is mostly linseed oil. Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. Okay, so we got a lot of complexity back here, um, but it doesn't have to be like the reference, but I want to capture the essence of all that. So again, I'm going to kind of take it slow and I'm going to bounce around to a couple different spots that... looking for kind of some key points here some key areas that I get them established first and then kind of use that as a guide of where the other parts of this is gonna live on the, the mountainside So again, this is uh, going on uh, with just more of a thicker roll of paint on the brush. And this is where things are going to start to come alive really start to make sense.
for me, I think this is one of the most enjoyable parts. It really does not have to be anything specific. Just getting the patterns right and just kind of imagining where a meadow might be and just filling it with snow. Kind of just be any way you want it to be. It's really relaxing. And if some of these marks are just not bright enough, I will add that later, but I would rather go with something that's not quite as intrusive and not quite as bright, and then build from there if I have to. I mentioned that I'd be moving to Whitefish. Well, we're still thinking about that because we're in a really good spot right now where we can just focus on the painting and uh, that's kind of at the forefront for uh, both of us. And what's most important is just continuing to work on our passions and um, building our businesses uh, we have a really good spot, and I think we are we may actually stay, and instead of moving, uh, just spend more time up there with the camper. Um, because it's just so easily, we, we find ourselves uh, going, moving places, and then uh, end up spending most of the time just in the studio, painting and working on our, our things anyways and so we're kind of afraid of going up there and not really taking advantage of it and ended up just spending a lot of our times just working anyway so I think we might we may stay put for a little bit actually and then uh, just spend more time adventuring up around there because it is just a wonderful area of the state um, just using our taking advantage of our pop-up camper. But as far as why we're considering or what we're thinking about, it definitely has to do with uh, probably more personal and just trying to figure out where we want to be for the long term. I think 
we'd like to we might get up there we maybe in the next couple of years and maybe just try living up there and seeing how we like it but we really just are trying to figure out where we want to be for the long term and that's kind of has mostly to, to do with why more blue yeah I think uh, so what I'll say about the, the whitefish area versus the the Bozeman or Yellowstone areas there's definitely more access up there it's the same amount of beautiful country in both places but uh, the access around here is certainly more difficult it's more concentrated into trailheads and less opportunities to just, you know, go to some random spot and kind of have it to yourself. It, it, it really funnels most people into the larger trailheads and it's, it's more crowded. It's harder to find some of the special places I like to be. Um, there's wildlife and, and I, there's more elk in this part of the state. There's probably more deer in that part of the state. But we may just stick around and just plan out our, uh, our time outside more. Um, and just be more deliberate about that. All right. So all of that is looking really nice. like that as a whole I think that's looking really good um, yeah so on the, the color mixing my palette and how much medium I do stream all of my color mixing live with the channel membership before every live stream here I'm just gonna continue since I kind of into the blue area just continue with some of these trees and so if I kind of turn the, the brush on the back side and pull it down, it's a great way to just kind of automatically create the look of pines. Got some more black here. Um, but just talking about my, my colors again, though, I, I always use about... It, pretty constant amount of uh, consistent amount of medium uh, like 15 to 20 percent medium and then if I need to thin it down anymore I uh, just go with thinner and I use Gamsol Uh, yeah, so the, these series of paintings I'm doing, I, I will do some prints of these. Uh, it's a good question. And I'm going to keep them limited. 
Um, they're probably, I'm probably only going to do 10 from each one of these particular paintings. But it kind of started out as an idea of just to work on some of the, the, the colors that I use and the compositions I think about. And I, I really, they're really transformed forming kind of into more than that and so yeah I am going to be doing some prints think thanks Rob okay so still just that automatic pine tree is just kind of just downward again I just can't rush this this whole process the more I slow down just kind of just get it a, a, a on a consistent pace here is really I think what's been helping me lately that's another thing that I, I feel like I've been able to take away is just remain at a consistent pace don't need to rush it Looking nice. Um, let's see here. Take my orange, mix it with my black, and get some larger trees right through here. that orange again a little bit of highlight Uh, no, so the the, the prints uh, we make ourselves, we use a, a Canon Pro 200 right now for our paper prints. Um, then I, I photograph the paintings myself as well and turn them into a digital image. And that, that's a long, long process of just trying to like color match the, the images. And um, there are some good companies out there for, for prints. Uh, I think there are, let's see, there's Finder Works, there's Pictorum, um, some good options out there to, to do them yourself. Um, probably working with somebody local would be a good option if you have that available. So I'm just thinking here. Grab a little more orange here and maybe just add a little too bright. A little highlight back here. Make a couple highlights. I'm going 
to work on some of these larger trees now. So I'm going to add orange to this black. And draw the tree trunk first. Okay, let's see. I'm just pretty simple here with the trees. I'm kind of using the bladed side of this brush to just push on and just kind of pop it off. And I'm going to uh, Continue adding the the warmth to this. So some more orange on here. Uh, the the orange is going to help it when it's starting to blend into uh, some of the sky. If you start doing this in the upper parts of the sky, it will start to blend with the blue and. Uh, They'll start to wash it out, make it kind of uh, pale and gray. And so by adding the, the orange, it kind of just combats that. And keeps it warm, keeps it the color of what a pine tree should be instead of turning, you know, like a light blue gray. Just kind of zigzagging my way. And if it does start to fade out against that sky color. Uh, that's just something that you can go back on at a later time when it starts to dry just a little bit and uh, just kind of cover it up. a little bit starting to pick up some of that blue color on the brush which I don't want and that burnt sienna color that's just kind of sitting behind some of these trees um, I can go in and just kind of fix with some of that sky color. I'll probably just leave it for now.
make some more of a black again. And sometimes the darkness of uh, these colors can be hard to maintain as you're working wet on wet like this. And that's where it's just sometimes just best left alone and uh, can be adjusted either wet over dry later or sometimes you find that sweet spot where paint is still wet but starts to get tacky and it's easier to layer. You can fix some of those things. Two hours and ten minutes so far. That's pretty good time. I'm gonna get through the full first pass here before I jump off the, the live stream. So I'm gonna continue working through. It's maybe a little bit longer of a stream today, but that's okay. and burnt sienna, just keeping everything nice and warm. Little tree right here. Mixing, mixing burnt sienna and phthalo blue together. So that's fairly good for for right now. I'm just going to continue working through the foreground now. All right. 
I'm going to wash the brush. In fact, I think we, I can get into uh, maybe some of the light over here. Let's see. So first thing I'm going to do is pick up some pure white. So having some of the solid white is just going to really make it eye popping. It's going to really catch you. So having that white really helps achieve that brightness of the sun. And it's going on pretty thick. I like when I paint these bright colors, I like to have it to be thicker paint because those thicker paints uh, just reflects that color back at you more in intensely so that makes it appear brighter and when we're talking about showing the light having those highlights be thicker in physical paint um, that's what's going to make them appear brighter so I'll take in Some yellow now, mixing that in with the white. Someone says, love how you create depth, I appreciate it. Chris says, hello, beautiful from Nevada, thank you, welcome. Okay, so right underneath, I'm gonna start adding this yellow color and just blending it into it just slightly. So one of the things that really helps to to show the light is uh, having that yellow just right on the edge of some of these brightest areas. And so I'm going to take this yellow and blend it into kind of the surrounding area of the where I added the white as well. really soft with my pressure of my brush right now and just trying to just use that bladed edge to fan it into some of the work I did already and then yeah just like that so now right underneath where I added that yellow this is kind of a dirty gold color here and right underneath that I'm going to add that color and then underneath that I start to get to some of the reds so they all continue to mix into each other and that might just be too dark Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to start dragging this color in a downward motion to start to appear like distant tree detail. And sometimes I'm just picking up paint that's already on there and just uh, manipulating it into what I want. So this is uh, just picking up some magenta here and have this hillside going up but as it gets into the light uh, it needs to 
start to light brighten up and uh, I'm gonna make it more into a, a warm magenta color right through here So the details within the highlights, I'm now starting to add. So I'm just picking up this nice magenta color. It's kind of the same, but just a bit more dark. It starts to stand out. I could take that magenta and just mix it into the blue here. Try that. It's not dark enough. So now I'm just taking colors kind of just randomly. More of a dirtier. Yeah, it's still not okay here. Just take some darker blue, mix it with some of this magenta. A little bit of orange. Keeping it warm. Yeah. So I just want, I want it, the color I laid on is brighter than what I want it to be in the end. So now what I'm doing is just trying to add those darker details, but still keeping it warm. And then I, tend to leave some of that that I had on initially um, and as that's left behind it starts to look like other details and Painting with Juan, thank you. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that beautiful painting, sir. Hope you're doing well. Hope your family's well. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Thank you so much for the support. So now as I add these details through here, you can just see how it just starts to make sense. And I can take that pink color and I can start to drag it into the blue here. And then vice versa, go back in and it starts to pull that blue back into this color. Just like that. And just drag it right down into here. random highlights gosh it's just making me want to be back here I'm sure it was uh, not the same kind of morning the snowstorm this morning up there Oh, hey, Michael. Uh, good afternoon from Pennsylvania. Somebody gifted me Windsor Newton water-soluble oil paints. I'd like to try them. Do I still need a medi medium? 
Uh, thanks, Mike. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I've never used the water soluble oils, so that's something that I don't have much knowledge on. I should educate myself in in water soluble oils, but uh, I know a lot of folks do use the mediums with those. Um, I just don't have any specific knowledge on that. Okay, so I need to get a darker color here again. So I got some more burnt sienna over here and I'm just kind of mixing some black again. Mixing the burnt sienna into that. A little bit of uh, orange as well. Orange live on there. So then, as I get into the bottom portion of this, is where I want to start having some darker shadows, and that's going to really help show that light. So, again, part of the Part of the light, uh, so much of it has to do with the, the shadows nearby that um, let you know how bright that is. I think it really helps and, and just having things fresh in your mind as well. I, you know, we were here, th this painting I, I think is turning out particularly, particularly well. And it really helps to have it fresh on my mind, just remembering what I was feeling in this area and, and how that was like. And, um, Sometimes when you sit on reference for a long time, it, I feel like it's hard to capture the, the essence of the area or what you were feeling the more you wait. Um, in the paint, the larger painting I'm working on right now, I took the reference years ago. And not that it's not possible, but it makes it I think it makes it easier when things are fresh in your mind and you can remember what you were thinking and feeling and all that good stuff. So very light pressure right now as I'm just trying to just continue to create some of these trees but I don't want to be too harsh with it so I'm just slowly uh, just trying to give the appearance of these trees as, as I lift them up into the, the brighter area. Now uh, is a good time let's see here yep so I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away from that that's that's looking good up there I like that and I'm gonna move into uh, the foreground now and we'll kind of knock that out so mix a brighter color than what was on the the valley floor here and start to add some highlights into that. And I may tone down it's, I like I like it but maybe some of these reds come off as a little too punchy. So I might just scale that back and mute them, mute them out a bit and add some gray.
perhaps into some of that. We'll see, but I, I'm not going to touch it yet. So I want the light to just kind of lead you up to the foreground here. So I'm not going to touch too much of uh, this area back here with these brighter colors. I, I want some texture for sure. Um, but some of these highlights need to be a bit more subtle back on this side. I know you're using a professional camera and lens, but can you suggest a camera for beginners and would you recommend pictures in grayscale? Uh, so with the camera, it really depends on what your intentions are. If, if you're just wanting a camera for reference photos, um, having something with a good zoom that can help or a lens with a, a good zoom capability in case you need to kind of zoom in but um, I would not worry about the quality of the camera if you were just wanting reference for painting I think if you wanted to take your own reference sometimes I think a cheap camera I mean it, it, it can really just capture everything you need you really just need the the idea you don't need the quality photo the the reason I use more expensive cameras is really for imaging my paintings um, and that's a huge part of of my process is getting good images for printing for licensing um, for display on the website uh, that's really where the quality of camera be becomes important but if you're just an enthusiast you just want decent pictures uh, I personally would get a camera off of like a secondary marketplace like eBay and it, you know a good DSLR you, I'm sure you can get one a good used one as long as you know somebody has a good seller rating for a couple hundred bucks you could probably get a good package or something like that um, it would help to be in something like a like a DSLR just to get yourself familiar with some of the functionality of the camera and how different lenses do different things for you just little things like that um, this is nothing specific though again I, I don't think any specific camera really matters um, I would just go with the most that you you want to afford and uh, focus most of the quality on the lens and get a good range you know something that can go from like a 16 mil millimeter zoom or and then you know maybe up to 85 or you know the highest I go is is 400 but that's a lot of zoom that's more for filming wildlife and things like that but yeah with cameras it's if you're doing something like making videos or or imaging a painting the quality helps for sure, but in terms of just getting reference, that's not that important, to be honest. Let's focus on some of the 
sagebrush in the foreground now, so I'm going to wash the brush. Any advice for a graphic pencil artist? Graphite pencil artist? Uh, I love pencil. It's what I really started out with. Um, that's kind of what I, I did throughout my childhood. Gosh, I don't, I don't know if there's anything in specific when it comes to pencil. There's so many different ways to go about graphite or charcoal or something like that. It really depends on what your outcome is for something super detailed and specific. Um, it, you know, I, part of me, it, I think very painterly these days, in a, more of a painterly mindset where I'm thinking more about values and tones. And um, if I were to get back into drawing, I would probably want to use something more like charcoal and where I could really scrub out some values and get the tones right and then start to add detail into that. Um, but for like hyper realism, I mean, that's that's obviously a little different. I think just with anything, it just takes time to develop the things that you that you want and the things that are important to you. And the more time you put behind it, the, the more you start to discover those things for yourself and what they mean to you. More burnt sienna. I really like painting foreground detail because uh, it lets you just start to, start to unwind and start to relax because um, so much of it is just can be whatever you want it to be. Sticks can break, leaves can be churned, grasses can be bent over. It it can all just be a, a multitude of different ways and and still look accurate. Um, so it's really when I get into the foreground is when I you know, the stress level of painting, everything just starts to just wind down. And um, yeah, I really like working on foreground detail. So I'm just thinking about general value, contrast. I start to think about the specific composition of each sagebrush and start to think more on a deliberate side of things, how exactly the shape of the brush is going to look, the bush is going to look, and some of these bushes back here can just be lifted up to give it kind of that effect. It doesn't need to be anything specific. A lot of this can be created with just just automatically using the brush to your advantage. Yeah, I think that you know, I'm going to just bounce back to the the sun as as I just continue working on it, it's bugging me out. So I'm gonna just scale that brightness back just a touch in some of the reds. Let's see here, just I'm trying to mute mute down, create a red, but mute it down a bit. Let's see what this does. Even take this color. I just need maybe more of a mix of some grays in here. Let's see what that does. I 
I want it all to disappear, but it, I feel like some of it has got too much red. some of these colors, darker colors, and just get some of the shadows a little higher up in here. Can help too. some of the darker color and just get it back in pull it back into here Experimenting here. Yeah, that's helping out. Just kind of breaks it up a bit more and that I feel like helps a bit with the realistic feel of that. There's just something about it. to some of the, the foreground again. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue and some yellow and get kind of a green tone, but then I'm gonna mix it with gray and we're gonna get that feeling of uh, kind of that blue-green sagebrush. Yeah, I would like to uh, do a waterfowl study. That um, I'd like to get into some wildlife, and you know, at least in the beginning stages, I'll do some live stream with that. Um, might be something I need to get more comfortable with first. That uh, not that I'm not comfortable painting waterfowl, but uh, for the the lives here, it's. I think I'm finding kind of my rhythm with it. Um, it's easier to kind of just stick with the the landscapes right now. 
but it's something I'd, I'd like to progress into being able to do that for sure. I appreciate it. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, the that pintail is that's still one of my favorites as well. So this is just, it's got a little olive feel to it. And I'm just, just trying to get some of this texture and the color just kind of developed at the same time. Again, continuing to take my time with everything. Getting there though. Yeah, I would really like to see studies on mule deer, elk, bighorn, anything like that, for sure. And it's something I'll, I'm definitely going to get into. Um, as I get more comfortable with, with these, I'll, I'll get into it at, at some point here. That's uh, definitely something I will, I promise that. And again, this one is, I, I really feel myself making improvements in how I go about something like this. Um, and I think that'll transfer over to things like wildlife. Uh, but it's definitely easier for me to um, get in the groove by doing landscapes like this. And um, hopefully, we'll, you know, you'll see these improve with time and get better and that's just me becoming more comfortable with how I go about it and that's really how it helps me with my larger work overall as well so just kind of random scrubs and motions with this just trying to just let the brush kind of just speak for itself as I go across here in the sage. I'm just looking to create a lot of randomness in the textures and I feel like over time, it, you know, the, when I talk about developing relationship with your paints and the colors you use, it's the same way with the brushes and same way I think about the brushes. It seems like just over time I start to, as I develop that relationship with the brushes I use, and it's why I stick to just a few different brushes so I can work on that relationship because um, as I continue to work and use the same brushes day after day. I, when I get to something like a sagebush, in my mind, I, I feel like I have a, uh, I have an understanding of what to do with that particular brush that gives me the effect that I think that I'd like to achieve, if that makes sense. And so just kind of automatically over time without thinking about it, I know when I get to sagebrush, I kind of just, and do what you're seeing now and same thing when I get to a tree when I get to mountains uh, you'll see the the same motions and how I use the brush and the, I manipulate the paint in the same way depending on what object I'm working on and that's just something that I, I feel like over time I've just kind of learned to do and ah, I like it when I 
use the brush this way for this object and it just kind of becomes automatic. But I think I could do a lot with um, a lot of the same with different brushes. It's just whatever brush you get comfortable with, that's probably the biggest deal. Actually, while I'm doing this, I'm going to use this darker, warm blue-gray, uh, and I'm going to just first start with a little darker color here. Add some trees. Little grove of aspens. branches Same thing with some of this in here before I get into some details in the sage. Uh, just think about maybe maybe dead sage, maybe some branches on the ground, something interesting. Just those little details, some of them in the, the foreground can just bring so much.
some burnt sienna. Some orange. That, just a little bit of red, a little bit of burnt sienna. It just starts to, you know, having just... No, it doesn't need to be anything in specific, but sometimes just having some of these random warm colors mixed in just adds so much brightness and life and A little bit of brighter color here. This is where the paint starts to get thick and that thickness just starts to make it appear brighter. So again, same thing, you use some brighter colors in the area of the sun, some thicker paint, kind of do the same down in this area. And the more that I poke at this, the better it's going to look. A lot of little details that uh, I think I could kind of sneak in here without overdoing it. Coming right up on the three hour mark. Really impressed myself with this one. I think it just went very smooth. I hope you enjoyed this. I think uh, I'm getting close to wanting to take a break. I kind of like some of the unfinished look through uh, some of the the middle part of the painting here. Um, so a good chance if you guys have any other questions, feel free to let me know um, as I begin to wrap up the, the live here. I'm gonna go for just a few more minutes as I just finish up a few more details. But overall, I mean, I'm just really thrilled with, with how this looks. some orange and I can add that orange into some of the trees here start to add a little bit of highlight
few random details. I'll probably add more sage, maybe popping up down here, things like that. Just, I'll probably keep going with random details. Sometimes this is just the point when I need to step away, take a break, and you start to see things differently when when you do that. You stand back. Um, even just having the camera to my left here, it's uh, it helps for me to move the camera and start to look at it from the other way. And as I kind of look at it from one angle, it it you can get really get tunnel vision, and so that's what really helps me is take a break, stand back, move to a different side. overall just about there I think in the, the sky I could kind of just work on a couple of the, the highlight areas and things like that um, but it is looking good What's a good sky color? I'm struggling with the sky. Yeah, I mean, the blues up here, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna is kind of what I start with. I keep it on the blue side and add white. And then as I add white, it starts to brighten it. And then that phthalo blue green shade kind of kind of gives it that, that greenish look. And then uh, I keep things more in a muted tone so they don't get too green as I mix into this area. And then I start to add some of the magentas and pinks. If it does start to look uh, a little bit off or green or what have you, uh, those magentas can really help. Um, but just very muted. And then I start to add color as I get into um, some of these lighter areas. But um, that's pretty much it. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and white. Uh, they're your friends with the sky for sure. And you can add some variations to that. But that's pretty much all it is. Uh, so yeah i want to thank everybody for joining me i really appreciate all that thank you all for the support uh, if you're interested in the color mixing or reference photos again check out the channel memberships the blue join button on the channel or below the video uh, it really helps support the channel and what i'm doing and um i will see you all in uh, a future one i'll have the remaining process of this and I'll post the time lapse and then I'll post the uh, the remaining part of the real time to the membership as well so again thank you all for joining me appreciate your questions hope you're all doing super well and having a fantastic day and uh, I think that's it I'll see you in the next one